Right, well, hiya, and um, welcome to part 19 of the SV650 rebuild. Thought I'd get all the niggly jobs out of the way first, uh, little things that I just haven't fitted and haven't done. So I started off with the rear brake spring. Um, we've now got a rear brake light, so that's quite nice. And also time to check the horn. Problem is, the horn doesn't seem to work. So I removed the horn and put the multimeter across the wires to see if we've got any voltage. Turned on the ignition, pressed the horn button and we've got 12.6 volts. So that means we've got power coming to the horn, but obviously the horn's not uh, functioning. So I've got one on order. Another little niggle I had was with the headlight. Um, I had a loose wire in the actual headlamp bowl itself. So sorted that out, we've now got a headlight with low beam, high beam, working fine. So uh, another one to tick off the list. And then set to getting rid of this khaki trim off the uh, seat pod. Um, it came off quite easy actually, I thought I was going to struggle with this one, but uh, it didn't do too bad. Um, some proper horrible gunky mess on it, I don't know what type of glue uh, has been used to try and stick it on. But um, we've got it off, so now it'll be a case of um, rubbing it down with a bit of petrol or something. Get rid of all this gunky, horrible yuck. And then I can get it ready for spraying. I'm going to try and make it fit a little bit better than it already is at the moment. It seems to sit a little high at the back. Another quick job was moving the handlebars up over the yokes. The CBR 600 forks are a lot longer than the SV, so that's coming handy to be perfectly honest. We'll give it a try, should make the riding position a little better. Okay, so wife was inside watching uh, the usual soaps, so I came back out into the shed and thought right I'll sort the brakes out, bought myself some new brake fluid topped up the master cylinder and then started basically pumping the brake lever past experience of bleeding brakes it either takes forever or they go in five minutes which is ace So it was out with the 8mm spanner, pump a few times, open the bleed nipple, close the bleed nipple, pump a few times, open the bleed nipple, close the bleed nipple, pump a few times, etc, etc. This looks as though it's going to be one of those jobs. Now, I did eventually start to get um, some pressure through, which was quite good. So I thought. I kept alternating between the left and the right brakes, hoping that uh, it should sort itself out. But, alas, no. Uh, so I've reverted back to the old way of uh, sticking a cable tie around the handlebar and I'm going to leave it overnight and I'll give it another try in the morning or tomorrow afternoon after work. Now I'd lost my mojo for a little while so we're back three days later. Pop the cable tie and then we'll try the front brake just to see if anything happens. Alas, no. So I'm going to have to take the calipers apart, have a look, see what the problem is. There's something certainly not right because they were working before I took them to bits. 
So the new horn arrived. It's only two wires. Um, not blowing my own trumpet or horn, uh, but uh, fitted it on. And she now makes sound. One less thing to worry about. Now the wife had sorted out some birthday celebrations for me for a few days, so we've been away. I've been away from the shed, came back in, and after about 15-20 minutes of bleeding the brakes, they bled. I was well impressed. So I thought, seeing as things were going so well, I'll do the back one as well. Um, this is virtually real time. This took about two minutes. I was so cheesed off, it was unreal. Why couldn't the front do the same as the back? But on the plus side, both the brakes work, so I'm pretty chuffed with that. Time to move on to the next thing. Pump the brake lever, open the bleed nipple, close the bleed nipple, pump the brake lever, open the bleed nipple, close the bleed nipple. Again and again. I was having nightmares. at the back of the caliper as well. Just one last double check to make sure that we've got no air whatsoever in the system and everything's honky dory. Okay, parcel arrived today, so it would have been rude not to open it. And we have a new chain and sprocket kit. Lovely jabbly. But according to the packaging, it's not just your normal chain and sprocket kit, it's that must make it really good. People get paid good money for thinking this stuff up. I thought I'd ordered a gold chain, but obviously not. But it doesn't matter, it still fits the bike, hopefully. Seeing as I'd finally had success with the brakes bleeding through, I um, put the old cable tie around the brake lever last night, and I've come out this morning, and they are perfect. Okay, so it's time to fit the sprocket to the rear wheel. I'm started off by undoing the big nut on the back for the spindle. And then it was out with my nylon persuader. And remove the spindle and drop the rear wheel out. Just for tonight, we can be one. Remove the cush drive. Replaced all the bolts. Unpack the rear sprocket.
and then fitted the sprocket back onto the cush drive with some really rusty nuts which once I've sort of road tested the bike I'm going to swap all these out anyway and uh, make them look nice and shiny and pretty then fitted the rear sprocket back onto the uh, rear wheel and put the back wheel back on the bike again When I bought the bike the chain was that rusty that I ended up using a cordless angle grinder and cutting it off just for ease of moving really. Uh, so this front sprocket was going to be my nemesis, or I thought it was anyway. Um, when I'd taken the cover off and looked at all the rust it scared the living daylights out of me. I thought oh here we go this is going to be a real pain in the backside. Now I've got an old motorcycle chain hanging around so I thought well hopefully if it fits, which it did, uh, I can use this to my advantage. Um, put it on so that I could lock up the front sprocket and then took my trusty two foot breaker bar and I thought I was really going to struggle with this but it moved very nicely. I honestly thought something was broken, I thought this is just too easy. This was a technique that I learnt off YouTube. Um, basically, block of wood through the back wheel on the spoke, and it locks everything up really nicely. And also, with it being wood, um, very little chance of damaging anything either. Need to sort out taking off that engine casing and all, and giving that a bit of a clean and a paint. Another little job that I've forgotten to do. So, pop the old sprocket off, put the new sprocket back on. There we go, nice clean nut. Tightened everything up. Uh, put the chain back around the sprocket, obviously, so that I could tighten the nut up. So, all tightened up. Tab washer bent back over again. Uh, just ready for the chain. Had a little bit of lunch, came back out again, and uh, it's time to put the chain on. Nice and simple this one really, it's basically just threaded through the swing arm, through the frame, round the front sprocket, and then pull the two ends together and fit the split link. Getting to grease the uh, inner parts of the split link first before I put it all back together. Now, I used to actually have the special tool to um, refit these and take them off, uh, but unfortunately. It got damaged, I uh, loaned it out and uh, it got broken so I've had to go back to the old fashioned way of two hammers, one either side and just smacking over the soft link. Okay, so that all that was left to do really was to adjust the chain up and tighten the rear spindle just try the rear brake obviously because the wheels been off which I did I was getting quite excited at this point um, tires hardly had any air in them so started up the compressor filled the tires with air 36 and 42 respectively pounds per square inch and then we were ready in the boxes for the inaugural test so, for 
the first time in six years, well, nearly seven years. Um, she's up and running and off she goes. Even on this short run up and down, you can tell how much torque these V-twins have got. No wonder I like them so much. And old Numpty went and stalled it. You'll have to forgive me for this little bit here where uh, you just hear engine noise. I'm backing into in doing a 93 point turn because it is quite narrow behind the camera. Okay, so now I know that everything's working fine and dandy. Um, I think it's time to start doing a little bit of work on it, getting it looking something like now. Hopefully get rid of that exhaust, put the Ducati one on. Don't know about the bodywork just yet. I do like the back of the XV. It looks really smart, but I do like that RGV. So we'll see where we go. Um, fingers crossed we should have it done fairly soon and out on the road for spring or summer fingers crossed all i can say is thanks for listening thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next installment <laughs>